million dollars worth of game. We love all our supporters out there for rocking with us for so many years. We got everything going on wherever you like. Gilly on Sports, Where's Wallow, Adventures, whatever it is. What you need to do right now, I need you to push the subscribe button, but also share, like. Go down below, get some merch. Share, like, get some merch. Subscribe. We got more to come. Subscribe right now. Million dollars worth of game. Ah. You're now tuned into me, 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 Million dollars worth of game today is very special. Yes. It's not just we got a sixer here. Yes. When you think about when, when I think about 92, right, I never forget, I was uh, playing for Penn State, and this young man game remind me of mine. The, the thing is, man, the three-point, I'm talking about his three-point game has turned up tremendously. It's to a whole nother level. It's just the whole style of his play, his aggressiveness. He's a killer on the court. And every time I see this guy play, I think about my game. Um, playing for Penn State, coming State up out of Simon, Gray, <laughs> Simon Gratz High School. I was that guy, you know, and our careers were similar. I messed my ACL. My ACL still tender to this day. I don't know. I had a bunch of different surgeries. Uh, he said, uh, they set up the jail. They called you Tyrese Assey. No, they, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. I had a game. You know what I mean? I had a game. It just, I just, I just inactivated my game man. in jail because it was right. too, it was too dangerous to play sports and then went on the level that I was playing. On the once I stepped to the collegiate level, I couldn't, I couldn't double down. That's why I don't play with you in playgrounds and stuff no more. My, I wouldn't even disrespect my game like that. The f out of here. You know I mean, but you know who we here with? The legend. Him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping it real. Let's keep it real, Neff. I've been telling you, you was him for three years now. Before they realized it. Hmm? You did. We talk about it. We talk about the shots. What? I was thinking about that on the way over here. Well, I tell you last year, I said, if you don't take 15 shots, at least you ain't done your job now. You're right. You was right, though. You ain't. You was right from the beginning. He said, shoot, shoot, yeah. shoot. Because at the end of the day, I always felt like, and what's so crazy is right now you average about 25, right? Yeah, about 26. 26, right. So Last like, year I told you, man, you should be averaging 25 points, man. Yep. I said, if you take at least 15 shots a game, 16, 17 shots a game, you're going to average 25 points, man. And it just so happened that it take time. It do. You know what I mean? Sometimes you see in, in people what they don't see in themselves at sometimes. Because I told you, man, you need to be more aggressive. Stop deferring to them. You, you right. You the second best player on the team behind Joel and B. Let me ask you this question. Who the top five players you played with since you've been in the NBA? Since I've been in the league, big fella. Mm hmm JH, James Harden. Mm hmm mm. Gotta be... Just on the sixes, right? Mm -hmm. Not just. Uh, you just played for the sixes. You played for level six. I'm saying, no, no, I'm saying, like, not just pick up. I'm saying, like, just with the with the sixes. Um, Tobias. Uh huh. Okay. Who's last? I'm trying to think. I make sure I don't miss nobody. Who played with my rookie year? I mean, shit. Seth Curry. I don't know. Seth was. Who, who, who's who's who's? I can't think of nobody. Can't think of nobody. I'm trying to think of somebody so I don't miss nobody. Yeah. I don't miss nobody. I don't know. I probably say I probably say Seth Curry. Seth Curry had game. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but Seth Curry had some real game, man. People didn't know that. I didn't know that for sure yeah. coming in, but he he could hoop for real. No, he showed he could hoop when he came. He was he, big here. Absolutely. When you when you first got drafted by the Sixers, right? Like, how did that feel? Hearing your name called. I mean, you know, it was bittersweet at the time. You know what I'm saying? When you hear your name called, it's like surreal. For me, like, in the moment, I was kind of upset because, like, shit, I mean, I thought I was going to be, like, top 14, honestly. But everything happens for a reason. So, mm -hmm. like, when I got drafted to the Sixers, I was happy. You know what I'm saying? I was happy because I knew this was going to be a city that embraced me. I knew mm -hmm. this was going to be a city that, like, you know, they they preach hard work. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was me. I'm that, I'm, that's who I am. I work hard. I work for everything I got. You know what I'm saying? Nobody ever... None was ever given to me. Right. My dad never played in the league. My dad was, you know, normal, you know, high school coach mm -hmm. growing up. So it's like I grinded for this, man. So I was happy, man. I was happy for the opportunity, but I had a chip on my shoulder because I wanted, I wanted people to know, like me going twenty one, that that was definitely a fluke. You know, I feel like my game was right. a lot higher than that. So when you look back at the uh, people that came out in the draft with you. It shows that that was a fluke. Man, hey, I'm just saying, man. Hey. You ain't got to say it because I'm going to say it for you. <laughs> I want to know how many people that came out of the draft with you better than you. <laughs> you know, my opinion, I don't think nobody. So. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'll say this, though. I got some. I, I, I love Anthony Edwards, though, my draft for sure. 
Big time. Yeah, Anthony Edwards is big time. He big time. I can say that. Ain't nothing did it in the offs. Yeah, Anthony Edwards is definitely mm-hmm. big yeah. time. He big time for sure. If if you if you could change anything, would it like or if you said, you know what, I would have been more aggressive or I could have or I would have did this or I would have did that, would you have would you have changed anything in your first few years? You know why I say I wouldn't change a thing? It's because that's why my entire life I wasn't ranked high nothing until like my junior or senior year. But like it always came easy to me. You know what I'm saying? I worked extremely hard, you know what I'm saying? But like playing in the game, I was always the starter. I was always probably the best player on my team, you know, for the most part. Um, I was always a leader. I needed I needed to to grow as far as like I need to be come from the bottom to the top. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. so my rookie year, my second year was big for me because I had big fella, I had Ben, I had those guys who were at the time, you know, those were the big, you know, the big dogs, mm-hmm. and uh, I can look up to them. You know, guys like Tobias really helped me. Like I don't tell this story a lot, but like my rookie year, I remember we flew to Orlando. I'm on the back of the bus, like towards trading deadline, and I'm I'm in there sick. Like, I'm like, man, they they didn't do something. I don't, cause I wasn't playing. Mm-hmm. But you know, Tobias pulled me to the side, like, bro, your time gonna come, and he said it's gonna come this season, like at the end of like in the year towards playoffs. Like you just gotta be ready. I'm like I don't be ready, man. I ain't played in two weeks. Mm-hmm. All I do is sit here, man. I don't do nothing. Sit here and watch y'all play, man. I ain't, I ain't never did this. This ain't me. I ain't right. never did this in my life, man. Like I feel like in this other place where I could have played, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he's like, nah, be patient, be patient. And I just remember Doc calling me to the office, like, you're going to win some playoff games for us. I'm like, Doc, I'm winning playoff games. I don't play. I ain't played in two weeks. <laughs> he was just like, nah, I got you. And then from there on, I was like the first one off the bench. And then the playoffs came. I helped us win a couple playoff games, you know. We didn't win, you know, championship or anything. We didn't get a second round, but you know, I, I helped us go to game from game six to game seven in Atlanta, and you know, from there I just kept progressing. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you this: Go ahead, go. You might ask you, you, you know, you being that guy, prep school, college, now in the league. You know, what, what game do you got to the young cats that's coming up? You know, right. that, that that's coming up and really grinding for it the way you have. What type of because because you 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 play top level on all levels. Yeah. You know, like what game do you got for them guys, man? I, Youngers. First, I didn't play prep school though. Yeah. I ain't oh, going to prep school. I went to public school. Oh, public? I thought you went to I went prep. to public school all four years. Okay. Yeah, I ain't I ain't I ain't really believe in like the, the, the prep school route. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I was I was class six A in Texas basketball though. That's the highest class. You know what I'm saying? We played against D one, at least one D one player every single night we played the playoffs. That went what six, seven games. I never got to win a state. You know, my brother and my best friend, my brother, he's here with me right now, but we, we went to battle against everybody, you know what I'm saying? So but for me, the game I give him is like, bro, you just Oh, your brother had a game? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just letting oh, him know. I just, you see how we look at him. I just looked over at him and told him. I said, oh, he had a game. He played football. Nah. He he, like, I'm like, he played Texas football. Nah, I ain't, he, ain't playing no ball. Nah, he hooped. Nah, he hooped. He played a little football too, but he hooped. He was a hooper, man. You know, you know, guy, guy had a different plan for him, mm-hmm. injuries. But nah, the game I give, bro, just for me, it's just like, you got to really grind. You got to really want this, man. Like, for me, I used to tell them, like, I used to have really had to go at them at practice and really, like, make them know, like, I really love this. Like, mm-hmm. this is not a game to me. Like, this right. winning championship stuff, this is not, it's not a joke. And it's like, I need them to raise their level of play. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's all about who you want to be, who you, like, what person you want to be and how you want to go about things. Like, even this year in practice a couple of times, like, just fast forward into where I am now, like, I don't have to be one of those guys in practice where I go, I'm going at a guy like, like Jay Spring, and just because I know how good Jay Spring can be. Oh my God, yes he can. So like, I'm I'm going that, I'm cooking him, I'm talking to him crazy, but it's like, that's not from like a, me just being a bad person, that's me being like, I want to win so bad, right. and I know we're going to need him. And you want to bring the more, mm-hmm. most competitive fight out of him exactly. that you can bring out of and him. And I seen, I seen James Harden go at you like that. Right, right. How, w- w- did, did you learn that from, from the moments you had when he came to the team and he was going at you like, yo, you know. Right, right. I think I learned a little bit of that from him. But that that came from within a little bit, man. Like my pops, my pops crazy. You know, okay, I mean, okay. Yeah, my pops, he 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 insane, man. He's crazy. But like what I learned from Jay, it's, just, it's different what I learned from him. I learned a lot of like business stuff from him. I learned a lot of like uh just managing the game, knowing how to get big flow of the ball, mm-hmm. knowing how to get my own stuff off. And uh his his biggest thing with me was like, bro, you you nice, bro. Like you gotta be confident. You gotta know like Sometimes I give you this ball, or Joel give you the ball. It's, it's f us. Like you gotta go get your own. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we need you to do that. And uh, I think that was something that really helped me. And it's funny because we said in the in the in the old, in the old studio, you said that to him, like, yeah. "Yo, 
Shoot that fuck hey yeah. Mike. You know Gil, that fuck hey Mike. You the guy, shoot it. I don't no, care if hey, shoot no, it. No, because I'm a person that when you you see a, somebody that is great, but they not all the way a certain they greatness. Right. You feel what I'm saying? It's like it's times where it's like, bro, we done came down six times, bro. Yeah, I ran straight to that corner. You what you doing, man? The ball, you touching that ball, but you not even being aggressive, man. We need because when you look at the Sixers, I, I looked at it like this. I said, "It's two people on the team that get their shots the easiest. It's Joel Embiid and it's Tyrese Maxey. Mm -hmm. But if Tyrese is on a, I'm young, I'm deferring to the older guys. You know, just right. a lot of that be out of respect thing. It be out of man." How I'm going to come down and gun out James Hart, man. This nigga's an MVP in the league. He done averaged 35. He done led the league in assists. He going, but sometimes it come down to that. Right, right. Where it's like, no, you the guy now. You feel what I'm saying? We going to follow after you. Right. And you would see it because, you know, I watch every six a game. So you would see it. Okay, Joel Embiid and James Harden sit out. Tyrese Maxey, 38. You yeah. like wait he can do this shit while they here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? And every time they would sit out, every time the big fella would sit out, he got 33, 31. I'm talking about kill, but it was a whole different mindset from yeah. the time the game started. It was like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> floater. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, let you feel? What you I'm know what's funny about that though? Yeah. I, I I don't tell this story often because like a lot of people don't even know this, but like me and me and the big fella, he had he had the ultimate confidence me since I stepped foot on to in the practice facility. Like one day, like we playing, and I'm on like the red team, you know, it's my rookie. I'm on like the red team. I ain't got no real jersey on. I got a penny on. I'm like, oh hey, this ain't gonna work. I ain't, I ain't never had no penny on in practice. But like I'm going at the first unit and the second unit, we beat them in a little drill. So then everybody sit out, COVID game, and Joel come up to me like can you get 40 tonight? And I'm like, can I get 40, like 40 in the NBA game? That just sound crazy. That don't sound like, <laughs> what? I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking. But I told Um before I left the house, this is funny, I told Um like, if they, if so-and-so ain't playing, if Joe ain't playing, if Ben ain't playing, I'm just going to 40 tonight. I bet he looked at me like, I don't know what he talking about. But like, yeah. I really believe that though. Right. And then when Joel came to me and told me that, I'm like, oh yeah, I can go get 40. And I had 39, I'm like, okay, maybe I can do something. You know what I mean? I can really do something in this league. And it's like, him having that confidence in me, like, it was hard for me, like you said, like, with James and Joe and Ben and Tobias, like, it was hard for me to just, like, step right in and just be who I who I really am. Right. Because I just felt like I would be stepping on their toes, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it's like, in the NBA now, I think it's, you got to, the vets, the vets are the vets, right? Right. And you just got to ease your way into it sometimes, especially in the situation where you were on a championship team. Like, right. we talked about AI. Like, AI didn't walk into that. He walked into a different situation. Hey, I, let me just tell you something. Bubba Chuck, you know, I don't give it's a fuck. Bubba Chuck would have walked yeah. on a, the Laker, the greatest Laker team of all time. <laughs> that nigga would be like, I'm like, coming out the game for nah, magic. Yeah, Get the f I agree, though. I agree. Oh, Chuck, that's some magic. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So it was like, it was different for me, man. It was way different. But like now, I know I feel what you're saying though, and I, and I really do mean that. Like when I say I go out there and I, you know, I'm assertive from the get go. Even Joel, like Joel, know he tell me like go, you know, go do what you do. It's crazy because I see the personality change mm -hmm. in you. Like it's it's just crazy. Like because I like I say I watch every game, bro. Every game is recorded. All right. I see the personality change in you. I see you go from your first couple of years. I'm keeping it all the way real with you. Everything was a smile. Yeah. You foul a nigga. You like Raph. <laughs> 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 like, like, that was a foul. <laughs> we like now. It's more of it's just you exuding confidence, bro. You you ah yeah. you walking around you see that take us back because that's what Chuck used to do yeah Chuck used to bust your ass and then he walk around the arena and he I want to hear that shit. we love that shit. right so it's it's almost like we seeing you embrace the Philadelphia mentality mm -hmm. and we loving it and and it be all the way honest with you to see like the growth because over the years we had so many.
draft choice right. picks that ain't turned out to who they was. Right. You feel what I'm Not saying? For you. So for you to go 21st and turn out to be this, turn out to be, oh, you probably could have won first yeah, yeah. or second, that's that's the blessing that we got out of all this shit. Because, yeah. you know, we went through the Markel folks, we went through the Ben Simmons, we went through, the, there was a couple, few more of motherfuckers we went through. <laughs> Then it, it was rough. Right. So to get to you, who we got at 21st, who we didn't know what to expect. Yeah, he good, but he coming out 21st. 21st, yeah. You don't now, really expect it. Now, who is it in the league that gave you a bunch of long nights? When you got on that field, you was, on that court, you was like, oh, man. Who who gave you the business? This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, life isn't going your way. Shot a New Amsterdam vodka. You caught your wife cheating today. Shot a New Amsterdam vodka. The Philadelphia Eagles just lost today. Shot a New Amsterdam vodka. Is it still five times? It's filtered three times for a clean, crisp finish. Now you could drink it straight up. You could drink it on the rocks, juice, soda. Or you could just make a classic New Amsterdam mule. That's up to you. But when you're out and about at your local liquor store, don't you dare pass that New Amsterdam vodka. You scoop it up. You take it to that register. Boop. 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 That was you getting three bottles because you, you don't want to keep having to go back. You just might as well stock up right now so you can be happy. And you make sure you get you some of that New Amsterdam vodka. That's the official vodka of Barstool. Shout out to the New Amsterdam Queen. Be whipping it up at the crib with the girlfriends, making the cocktails, doing their thing. New Amsterdam vodka. Catch you, son. You know, I tell you, I, I tell you this. Uh, this is when I knew the NBA was real. My first real game, first regular season game, my rookie year, Ish Smith came down right at me. And I'm like, you know, let's, let's be real. We talking about Ish Smith. Mm -hmm. And Ish Smith, hell of a bet. Great yes, dude. Yes. Great dude. Been in the league a long time, made a lot of money. Right. But if you playing 2K and you a little kid, you don't know who Ish Smith is. Right, absolutely. So I'm like, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm being. <laughs> no, that's the truth, though. I'm being for real, though. I ain't trying to be Ish Smith can ball, though. Yeah, he can hoop. Mm -hmm. So then I'm walking in, like, shooting around, and Mike Scott, we used to have Mike Scott on the team. Yeah, yeah. He said, Ish Smith gonna get you with that cross. And I'm like, man, Ish Smith, man, I ain't worried about none of that. I check in the game. The very first play, I'm I'm backpedaling Ish Smith. What the I, Oh, whoa, whoa, layup. Mike Scott to the boss said, yeah, welcome to NBA. I said, oh, hold on now. So I was like, so when I see Instrument from there on now, I'm like, let me let me tie my shoes up a little tight. Damn. <laughs> let me tie my shoes up a little tight. But I say him and then for my first couple years, it was Drew Holiday, man, like my second year. And we played them in Milwaukee. And uh, this one, Jay, Jay had just got to the team, but he wasn't playing yet. Yeah. And I was just going through the motions, like giving the ball to Joe every play, giving the ball to Joe every play. And uh, James put me to the side like, bro, stop, stop giving the ball to him every play. Like, you could give it to him because he's the MVP, yes, but you got to be aggressive to help him. So now I run off like 16, 17 straight. You know, that's all I need to hear. I'm ready for now. I'm off like 16, 17 straight on Drew. And Drew pulled me to the side, you know, after the after, uh, halftime. We ended up winning the game. We pulled me aside. He said, he said, you cold. He said, well, I can't let you get more than 10 points this half, man. You know <laughs> He bad for real. <laughs> but nah, it was a great man. Now every time I, I see Wait, you. Did like, you get more than 10? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you did? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm saying, like, he the, I think he's like the best, like one of the best friends in the league. Absolutely. So it's like, you know, I respect it, but I always try to go at him because I show, I want to show, like, man, I could, you know what I'm saying? I can hoop too. You know what I mean? Let me ask you this question. Do you think um, the NBA can cause depression? Because you got to understand, everybody that's in the NBA was the man. Yeah. I don't give a where they came out of. Yeah. And the fact. majority of them was the man their whole life. You get very few people. Oh, I started playing basketball at 7, 15. Mm -hmm. and I, sometimes that worked with the motherfuckers at 7 foot 11. Yeah, 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 yeah. But for the most part, everybody in the NBA was the man in elementary school, high school, college. college. Overseas if they went overseas. Overseas. Now, you get to the league, like you said, I ain't played in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Now you might have started doubting yourself. Hold right. on, man. Can I play in this? Shit? Like, yep. am I not good enough? Am I? Could that shit really cause a depression on some of? Yeah, it do. I ain't gonna lie to you. It do. It's, it's because, like you said, like 
I said at the beginning when we started talking, like I was, his basketball stuff came real easy to me. Like I was always, and no matter what team I went to, like, I played like US18, right. U18, and I was, I felt like I was the best player on that team. You know what I'm saying? Again, that's all, all guys across the country in my age. But like it can though, it really can. Like I, I tell this story from last year when I came back from my foot being broke, mm-hmm. I went to the bench for a little bit, and whole time thinking like I was killing before I went to the, you know what I'm saying? Before I got hurt, and I'm like, like dang, like was is it me that like, why I going to the bench? You know what I'm saying? But like me being on a championship contender team at the time, like it hurt me. Like I, you know, I had some days where I call my mom, I'm, I'm telling her like I'm sick, like I don't, I don't think I'm supposed to be on the bench. Like I feel like I don't show why, you know, I'm starting. Yeah. But like, for me, it was like, okay, you know, I got to calm down. I got to really be a professional in this moment. And I got to play this role. And this is what they want me to do because at the end of the day, we got the big fella. We got a championship team. And we can win right now. So like, if my role is to come off the bench and try that, that's coach staff and the organization want me to do, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to try it. You know, and that's where guys got to be a professional. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard. It's gonna, you're going to be sad. You're going to feel some type of way. But like, you know, I end up getting my spot back, of course, because that's it's just what happens. You know what I'm saying? They, they figured it out. But like... It hurts. It hurts. No, and what's so crazy is I remember exactly what you're talking about because when you came back, they, the, like the report of of when you came back, and I, I you might have seen it, yeah. was that you kind of was like, no, coach, I got to come off the bench. I'll come off the bench. Uh, like, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, to me, I was like, hey, Neff, what right. the fuck is you talking about? Coming off the bench. Did you mean if you you gotta come off the bench? You come, Neff, what is you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Are you not healed? A, <laughs> What's so for you to sit here and tell that story is crazy yeah. how the new and the news really put you out there yeah. like you was the good guy. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. no, he came back and he was like, No, the team's rolling, and if I can come off the bench to help the team, right. I'm, I'm like, what the fuck? Was enough talking about, yeah. and you say and say no, nah, that way that ain't even how it was. It, yeah, but like, but for me though, like, like I said, like I was, I was hurt, I was upset about it, but I'm like, you know what, I got, I gotta be a professional in this situation. This can go to, you know, where you know, did that one come from? Ways. Where did you learn that? Get you know, they had an emotional intelligence to be on point to be like, you know what, let me put that to the side and let me think this through. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna go back to my roots, man. I, I grew up with both my grandmothers in the house, so it's like. They always you tell me like, no matter what situation you're in, you gotta make the best of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like in that situation at that time, you you know you could be selfish and think about yourself, or you know you you could think about the bigger picture. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking about man, you know what? If this works out, you know, and we win a chip, we all gonna eat. You know what I mean? Yeah, so right. it's like I gotta put my pride to the side. I gotta put my feelings to the side, my emotions to the side, and go out here and hoop for my team. And then it all works out. You know, I went out there and hoop, came out the bench, had like. Four or five twenty point games, and then like, all right, you know what? Oh yeah, you wasn't on the bench too long. Yeah, I think that yeah, was like yeah. a week and a half. Yeah, so I ain't, <laughs> I ain't doing no tripping on it. I ain't really tripping. Yeah, on we got it now. Now this year, what's going on? Because I, I'm, I'm in the process. How many more games is left, Gil? It, it ain't even All Star break yet, man. So, so when is All Star break in February? And where the playoffs come around? Because I right. ain't been playing. I've been out of the game in a while. Around when? Around April, April. man. That's when I'm be picking my team. Now, <laughs> oh my I'm God. telling you right now. This I'm letting you know right now. If, you, if y'all act right, Sixes will be my squad. <laughs> I'm telling we don't you. don't want you to. Sixes will be my squad if y'all if y'all going if y'all going to do this thing right. If y'all going if you, oh, gee, do, you had a Chiefs hat on like 2 weeks ago. Yeah, he's vicious. I'm my boys too. I got to go see the team soon. But but what I'm saying is, I only deal with winners. So, if you if y'all act right, Y'all might get a fan. I'm a diehard fan. I'm, yeah. I'm a scream at the parades and all that. Yeah, I but cry. we don't want you. I'm just keeping what? it real. We don't want your bum ass. No, I know. They got to. They got to. They listen, man. Yeah. I would keep it all the way real though. They talking about doing a trade and all. of You hear that in the news, right? Right. <laughs> I don't really want a trade to happen. I feel like right now we know the pecking order. Mm-hmm. I feel like every great championship team. You got to know the pecking order. Right. You got to know who's the best player, who's the second best player, who's the third best player. The, like, you got to understand who the superstars you gotta are. You got to understand them roles. You got to understand the roles. Yep. I feel like right now, we got one of the most unselfish teams. I feel like you can you can feel the energy that everybody want to win. Yeah. And we know the pecking order. So, it, it's so okay. The other night you was off, right? Right, right. It didn't matter. Mm-hmm. It did. You keep shooting that yep. motherfucker. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Always. You, because at the end of the day, you is him. Yeah, yeah. So we going to live and die on him. Yeah, got to. You feel what I'm saying? Got look, to. Look how much better Tobias Harris look mm-hmm. with the ball flowing. Right. He hooping. He hoop. And then like you said, man, I, first of all, I'm going to give a shout out to, to, to Nick Nurse, Coach Nurse. Shout out to Nick Nurse. Because he been huge. He been huge. Yes, he been huge. You know, he came in from day one. He he put he, you know put us all in that in in where we were in mini camp, and he said uh, we're gonna change some things. And he started with the big fella. He said, "You we can't play the way that we've been playing. Just throwing it to you, going heavy ISO every single time." And the big fella bought into that. And when you when when he buy in, yeah, the other ones behind me. We gotta buy in too. We gotta buy right line. You know what I'm saying? That's the MVP of the league. That's the best player. He and and he playing. He playing better than he ever played right now. Ever. And you know it's crazy. His assist is up. He love it too. Yeah, because it, it's crazy, but it's almost like Nick Nurse put Joel more in a Jokic role. Yeah. We got the ball more because let's be for real. I watch every six a game. In the last three years, we ain't had one backdoor goddamn layup. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. Right. Now we get a bunch of backdoor layups. We get a bunch of, and that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. It's about playing basketball to the best of your well, what's ability. A, what's a backdoor layup? You know, okay. The game for Whereas you. though, I might act like I'm coming around a, this way, and I go back door. Like and that. Joel and B get two assists oh, a game okay. doing that. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. It's, and then it's personnel too. Absolutely. We got guys like Kelly, yep. guys like Nico, Roko, okay. like big Mark, pickups. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they was, and Kelly is like Kelly and Nico. They like perfect for big fella. Yes, they. You know is. what I'm saying? Like Kelly, he cut into the rim. He trying to dunk everything. You know what I'm saying? Nico mm. is like the like perfect pack, perfect passer for the big fella. He's six eight, six nine. You know how to play the game. Uh, I mean, that shit this is one stuff. dude on the team. That's my guy. I always say it. I like him. I forget his name. He light skin. He got like the gold tee. He coming in and be lighting shit up. He, he about my height. About your height? Yeah. Milk? It's my milk. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Milk too. Yeah, milk too. Yeah, milk. Yeah, yeah, milk yeah, milk. Yeah, he, he, he been he huge crazy. Well. He going in and get crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Out of been, nowhere. He, just, he been huge too, man. He been huge. And like, guys, just like you said, man, we got, we knew our right. When Nick Nurse put that, at, like, he emptied in our, lo- our roles and, like, he put that into place, like, guys really bought in, man. And mm-hmm. it's like, when you got guys that are going to buy in, that's sky's the limit. And I feel like this team has a lot. Like, the chemistry's high. Like, I, we talked about a lot of people. We ain't talked about Pat Bev yet. Like, yeah. Oh, Pat yeah, Pat, yeah, Pat's in him. But, you know, Pat Bev's our guy. Yeah. I don't know. I already shout know. Out Pat Pat Bev, shout out to Pat Bev. Shout out to the Pat and Bev he, podcast. And, 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 <laughs> Pat, see, Pat All Pat want to do is sit on his podcast with his legs crossed. Yeah, chill. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. get deep, yeah. No, because I told him, you know, he came at such and such, and I had told him, stop that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pat Bell been huge, man. I'll meet you in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Pat, Pat Bell gangs it up. Pat bring that, and he bring that good energy. He do. He bring yeah. a lot of energy. He connect with the with the crowd, all that stuff, all that stuff help, believe right. it or not. Not even just the crowd, yeah. with, with us in in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Pat Bell, guy, you know, he he came at me um after after the Miami game. And he was like, you know what? Nobody gonna say, everybody gonna say, oh, Tar, it's okay, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? You cause you play bad. He said, F it, I'm saying you got you got to pick it up without Joe Webb. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, you know, everybody kiss your back. Everybody tell yeah. you how great That's you what's up. That's and why I said, Pat is and necessary. I, and I said, you know what, OG, I got you. Next two games, we win next two games. I play well, go to the age half forty. He like, that's all I wanted to see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know you got. Like, I know you done did it before, but absolutely. You know, everybody gonna say it's okay. But I gotta be the bad guy. And I, and I, I love Pat Bell. I literally love yeah. Pat Bell. I talk to him all, every day. You know what I'm saying? We play the game together. That's my dog. It's really yeah. my dog. Yeah. Really what what game y'all be playing? Call of Duty. You cooking? No, nah, y'all hey, playing man, on the same team? I, listen, I, I ain't a big video game guy. I just go in there, play, laugh, have fun. Oh, so they be you just be running around getting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Then> knocked off. <laughs> Look, look, man. They love playing against you. Come on, no boy. This motherfucker just running. Nah, we're on the same team. 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 You got to keep coming and reviving yeah. you. Come get me. I'm doing it. <laughs> Pat Bell be on that time. I'm like, Tari, use your gun. <laughs> I'm like, man, I do, man. I'll be trying, man. I'll be trying. I'm sorry. I get my five, six kills, but. I'm going to keep it all the way real. I could. I was playing my nephew, Issa. And that was one of the worst experiences. He was destroying because you. 
I never even seen him. <laughs> like I just would be looking for him to. Yeah, he's, he's it's like, bro, after 10 times, and I'm like, bro, this is not fun. No, it, yeah. I'm like, what you say? He what? <laughs> he cold? He cold. Oh, he playing games. Yeah, he cold against him. He, he, he garbage like him. me. <laughs> <laughs> I swear he took me like 20, 25. <laughs> In a row. Like 30 minutes. <laughs> but I, oh, yeah. but I really play though. I like I play. I got the headset and stuff, so I be playing. Like I'm not. I ain't just twenty five kills. But you know I'm gonna get like six, seven, eight. You know what I'm saying? And well, a good game. Well, but I'm gonna keep it all the way real. That shit is like crack cocaine, man. Yeah. That shit is so addictive, bro. What? I was at Meek's mama's house, and he like, nah, I just went out and bought this little TV to plug up down here because I go on my joint everywhere I go. I buy a TV, little TV, and I play golf. <laughs> what? I'm like, I, what? I mean, y'all see me on walking they don't onto play the plane. About that. You know, they they know do not play. play about I'm that. I'm walking onto the plane with my case in my hand. I'm, what? I'm playing. We on a road trip, like yeah. ten games. You know, I I, I be chilling. I be in the, in the room. So when I'm in the room. I'm on the game, talk to moms, chilling, man, talking to bro. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight. Yes. Today we got my man Day Ryan on here. He's going to give you the game on the Carrier Business Academy. I'm telling you, he got something going on, and he's going to give you a free. Ebook seven steps to turn your vehicle into a cash machine. Mm. But what you need to do first, just to get this, so you get this information, text MDWG to 443-347-4409. 443-347-4409. Deron, tell them what's going on, man. Tell them mm. what you got going on. Don't play no games. Mm. You telling me I can turn my car, my mm -hmm. minivan, mm -hmm. into a cash machine? Like you're just gonna print out cash? How? Hey man, just like the ebook say, I appreciate y'all fellas for having me on here. So First thing first, man, there's so many apps out here that people don't know about. Mm. All you got to do is deliver products, packages, or items from point A to point B. The app's going to send you the deliveries. You either take them and get money or you just leave them on it for somebody else to get money. All right? So that's what that seven steps to turn your vehicle into a cash machine means. Yeah, so break it down. How did you get in the game? What were you doing? What was your life before oh, this? man. So my life before this, man, I was in the streets. I was selling crap. You mm. know what I mean? So just trying to figure it out. Youngster, mom was on heroin. Daddy was locked up. And, um... I was just trying to figure out everything, working in the warehouses. That wasn't working. Only thing that was working was the streets. It was fast money. I liked it. So mm. from there, the feds started coming down. I said, I got to do something, man. I, I pivoted to corporate. That joint ain't work out. And I'm like, I got to find a side hustle. So I started working with this company in Baltimore, Expedite. They said, you can bring your car and deliver for us. So I was like, for real? So what happened is I started going there after work and started making more money part-time than I was full-time. Mm. Damn. How long did it take you to quit? Uh, it took me a minute. I was nervous. It took me like six months because I just ain't had a mindset. I was like, because, you know, mom was like, you need a job. Everybody puts that job stuff. So mm -hmm. it took me a minute. But once I But that is a job, the carrier job. Yeah, but it's entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. You know, in my household, you know, us get a job. Yeah. That, that was the thing. Mm -hmm. So entrepreneurship, everybody was scared for me to take that leap. But I was like, yo, this, this is it. I know this is it. And so how did you start really taking it to another level? Because, you know, you went from just doing this as part time to now you are now you educating people on how to do it but how did you level up as time went you had the one car you started doing your thing you was only operating off that one company it wasn't the apps you was rocking off yep. how did you get introduced yep. to the apps and all so that? I, so I started getting so I was as I was driving people was telling me about apps so I started researching the apps so I started googling the apps and I'm like okay cool there's apps out here that throw deliveries that I don't even know about mm -hmm. so think about it I was getting a route every day $300 a day Five hours. I started adding the, the apps on top of it. I started making six, seven. I said, a oh, day? I got, yeah, I said, oh, I got something now. Because now I'm adding it on top of it. I'm not just doing this one thing. I turned one into many. And so how many How many, How many? many was you doing a day? How many deliveries you think you were done a day? Like make 15, that 700. Like, like 15. 15 to make 700? Yeah, like 15 deliveries. How? How are you making 700 out of 15 deliveries? Because you're getting paid for everything you do. So I was making money faster. Think about it. I'm picking up $50 here, $45 here, $30 here. So it, it's no limit to it. They sending me deliveries. I'm taking them. Like, long as it's close, let me get that. Let me drop this off. Cool. Let me get that. Let me drop this off real quick. And that's how I start running it up. God damn. So so what was the So move? all they do is just, they just, <clears throat> so you can sit around basically like an Uber. But instead of motherfuckers waiting on an Uber, I'm you, just, you ain't got to even deal with the people. You just, oh, boop, oh, I got to go take that from here to here. Bet, yep. let's do it. Yep. Oh, another one comes through. Take that from there to there. Let's do it. But it all be local? All local, yeah. It's called ringing and pinging. Your phone need to be ringing. Your phone need to be pinging. Oh, say, so if, so if I'm really a hustler, I could drop 30 packages off in one day. That's, yeah, that's easy work. So you <laughs> that's, that's easy work. So you went from packages 
The package. Because you might get some packages that's all like you might get ten packages that's all in the four block radius. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. You went from illegal packages to righteous packages. Straight and you're up. running the game and all Straight you're doing up. is delivering. Yep. And what's the things you is, is it do you gotta have a specific car or you gotta have a van? What is it things that you gotta all, So you all of them, but you can start off with your car. See, I started off with my car, and then I elevated to the cargo van. Right? So I could take more stuff. And you get paid more money. The bigger vehicle you got, the more money you gonna make. But I started off in my car. Because you're getting bigger, bigger yeah. ship. Damn. So the bigger the shipment is that you gotta deliver, the more money you make. Exactly. Is it even like, is it ever something that's too big? Or that, like, like what's the biggest stuff you got? Everything can fit in the van? It is small boxes? No, nah, every, every, whatever can fit in the van. I mean, you taking anything, you got to think about this is the delivery business. Dry ice, medical specimens, medical wheelchairs, auto parts, critical cargo. You taking everything. If Listen, if I can get paid to take something from point A to point B, we taking it and we getting money with it. Damn. Damn. What's the most you ever made? In like a day, fourteen hundred. What the? How many packages? But that's with my box truck, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's with my box truck. That's the crazy thing. I worked my way up to a box truck. I always thought you had to have a CDL. Long as it's twenty six thousand pounds or less, all you need is a medical DOT. So I ain't even had to go get my CDL. What's a medical DOT? That's just a physical that you get in order to be able to operate that big of a vehicle. Mm. Yeah. Damn. So you just had a license. You got your driver's license. You just go get that little physical. Yep. And, and you good to go. As long as it's under 26,000 pounds, you good. Mm. And that's that every state or just? That's every state, yep. Damn, that's crazy. So so a box truck is way under 26,000 pounds. Uh, I wouldn't say way under, but some of them are classified over. It all depends on what it's classified as. So it, it got to be classified 26,000 pounds and less. For you not to have a CDL, if oh, it's okay. if it's classified as twenty six thousand and one pound, you got to go get that CDL. Mm. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's like you basically telling me that anybody out here that's watching this right now, if they text MDWG to four four three three four seven forty four zero nine, you're going to give them the game in the Carrier Business Academy. You're going to give them seven steps to turn your vehicle into a cash machine. And this just seems extremely easy. That and I'm shocked that a lot of people not on this. They only familiar with like. Uber. The, the reckless Uber Eats the, and Amazon Flex. Right. And, the low paying, yeah, the low paying fruit, yep. Damn, they, damn. Because those are the people that are promoting it. They don't understand. It's all these delivery apps, all these delivery companies that looking for somebody in their vehicle to take a, a medical route or things from point A to point B and get paid for. That's why I do be saying And they pay better than Uber? <laughs> yeah. Because you got to think, Uber, Uber going to mess your money up because you can only take one person at a time. Think about it. If you get three deliveries from three different apps, them packages don't care who they riding with. <laughs> so we ain't making money slow no more Right So your whole thing is that That's good See I start in the morning I wake up My shit jumping I got a van I gotta go pick up A bunch of packages here A bunch of packages here And a bunch of packages here And just kill them all through the day Just yep. looking at my phone Yeah. Okay like, so if I'm, when I wake up See if I got Eight Eight motherfuckers need I can I can just accept them Or decline them Yeah. Cause you run your own business You work on your own schedule You can tell them Hey I can do this delivery And I can't do this one and you let them know, hey, I can pick it up at this time or I can't. So you run your own schedule and be so your what if you So what if you late and shit like that? Some of the apps are ding you for being late, right? So communication is one of the biggest things in the delivery business. As long mm -hmm. as you communicate, hey, this is what happened. I'm running in traffic. This is what I got to do. You should be fine. Because mm -hmm. okay. the customers want, it might be some critical stuff that they need right now. Think about it. You might take an airplane part to a plane that got to fly somewhere. They're going to lose money if it's delayed. So it's some time critical stuff. Mm -hmm. Damn, an airplane part. So you do have to be professional. Absolutely, absolutely. You you, you, you got to handle your business. You can make a lot of money. You can make your money and get your... So if you just do, was doing bare minimum, I wake up every day, I drop off 10 packages. What, what's the what's the bare minimum you see a month making for that year? So bare minimums, people should be at least making 200 a day. So what is okay. that? You know, okay. 60, 70 a year. Okay, cool. All right, but at the end of the day, once you see those deliveries drop, you're going to get hungry. Yeah. <laughs> you better get hungry. Yeah. Damn, that's major. Yeah, that's I like that. I'm just like, damn, that's like this is one of the easiest things a person could do because all you need is a vehicle. And, and do the make or the model of your vehicle matter? For some companies, it do. For some companies, it don't. The crazy thing about it is you can actually get a contract. It'll be a master contract where you can now take this bulk of work. They give you like 10 routes, and you just go ahead and subcontract it out. So you don't even do the work. You get paid without physically doing the work. Mm. Damn. That's major, man. 
Mm. So it's a position where you can get money by yourself or you can hire your team to get money or do both like I do. I still drive. How often you drive? I probably drive like 20 hours a week. And you make your own, you still making your own. Yeah, I make my own. I ain't, I'm a hustler. I ain't going to do Damn. that. <laughs> so he's still driving, you got drivers. Yeah, I might got to activate my minivan. You might the, the, the motherfucker be all on the road, the, the water pump one. No, my joints. <laughs> These spark plugs. No, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get a tune up first, and then oh, wow. activate that joint. Start doing deliveries. Oh, I, I put. A, I got a couple. I got a couple couch I might put a, that I might get right on the app. app. Hey, low. I'm telling you, man. You put them seats down or take them out, and we can get with it. Man, come on. I'm gonna show you my minivan right now. Come on. Show you how you get. Uh, all right, let's get. Let's, yeah, let's see how you can get with it. And it's just like that. Hey, <laughs> hey yo. Wallow be pulling up in his minivan, he don't be fing around. One thing about the minivan, do you always say, damn, bro, what's the thing? Already come, I got the seat. Wallow be pulling up. He already got the seat out. He already oh, got yeah. the Nah, he ready. He already got the seat out. So, I got, how much money I can make off of this? Man, you should be making three to six hundred dollars a day off of this. How many packages do you think I could run? Man, you could do like. Man, you could at least get like 50 to 75 packages in. And that's just package delivery. So imagine something like a custom critical, like an engine or something, right? This can still fit in your car. You take that to the airport, they probably pay you 500 for that one delivery. Because it's that critical. Oh, man, I got to start. I got to get on these guys. I'm missing money, man. Look at all this space right here. Son. Look at all this space up in here. Yeah, we can break dance in here. <laughs> this is an AP. Like, you know what I mean? One thing about these minivans, the AP, the apartments, they everything. You can pull up in a rest stop. Hey, you blanket up in here, lay it down. I mean, cause you gotta think, look, Sean, you can lay it. Look. <laughs> I could be laying up in this joint. Oh, off the minivan. So, I, so listen, all off the minivan, you could be laying up, and that's why I love minivans, cause if things go rough, I always got a spot. You lay up in the minivan, mm -hmm. I get up, deliver packages all day off the phone. Yeah. Pull up at a rest stop, use the bathroom. Take a sink wash up, use, you know what I mean? Yeah. So even if you didn't want to work off the apps and do the on-demand work, that's routes. So you can guarantee your money. Minivan is off the hook. I keep telling you, we got the, got the socket right here. You can plug your phone up. I mean, the heat jumping in this joint. Yep. Oh, my job. Yep. This, this, this would be your money maker right here. Hey, yeah, yeah, they tripping out here, all right? <laughs> This all you need right here, and, and, and you can do it in the car. You don't need no big 18 wheel. No, but this one right here is major. The van, because you just said you can throw it. You can put an engine right here. I mean, you, you can get anything in there. Anything that moves from point A to point B, we put that in. But you see what's going down? You know what I mean, Carrier Business Academy, man, is going down the run. Man, listen, we doing a million dollars worth of game, business spotlight, and it's just like that. How do you? How do you? Um, you you, you know one thing I say about on on. I mess with Unk, because Unk always on point. But how do you stay so focused in the game, whereas though, you know, athletes, everybody is coming at y'all. The women always trying to come at y'all. They right. want the paper, they want the gifts, they want the bags, they want the trips, they want the Van Cleefs. How do you shake all that bullshit, man? I got a goal in mind, man. I got a goal in mind. I got a great family, great support system, man. Like, like you talk about Unk, Unk don't play that, man. Unk, Unk, Unk ain't going that. for that Yeah, Unk don't play that. And then... On top of Unk, my moms don't play that. Moms and my pops, cause they be on Unk, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But they just don't play that, man. I just I grew up in a household, like I said, both my grandmothers, uh, both my parents, you know, fortunately, and then they just don't play that, man. My mom was on me about all A's in school, you know what I'm saying? Like I had 3.8, 3.9 GPA in, in high school and in college. So it's like, she just, she still don't play. She called my phone, I talked to my mom like three, four, five times a day, literally. That's a blessing. And it's like, she, she on top of it. What are you doing? What are you doing? Have you, have you done this? Have you read this? Have you done? You know, she don't play. So it's like, and then she for sure don't play with Unc or, or Chris or my, yeah. or my brother. Mm -hmm. She on they, on they phone more than she on mine. Yeah. Did y'all do this? What Reese doing? Where he at? How he's doing? So yeah. the support system is important for me, man. Like, they're my family. It's my family. Like, I love them. I love these people. I, and for me, I ain't going to let them down. You know what I'm saying? We got a goal in mind. I got a job to do. And I got to keep progressing with that job, you know, for us to eat. So What, what is the, what is the, the goal? I want to be. I want to. I want to be somebody who say I ain't got no what ifs. You know what I mean? Like when I'm all said and done with the ball, stop bouncing for me. I want to say I maximize my entire potential. You know what I mean? Like I was the greatest I could possibly be. 
I don't want to be able to say, man, you know, if I had just worked a little bit harder, or if I just, man, if I had just, man, if I just went to the gym that one time, you'll never hear that from me. I'm in there daily. I'm always in there. I ain't, it's, I'm going to be so maxed out of basketball, like off of just watching film and going out there and working out and doing mm-hmm. everything possible, the best possible version of myself. At the end of the day, I'm going to have no regrets, not one. When mm-hmm. I hang it up, when this me being top 10 or top five, you know what I'm saying? Wherever I'm at, wherever I stand. I love you. See how he threw that out there? Me being top five. <laughs> yeah, wherever I, yes. wherever I stand in that, that's, that's what, what I'm I talking stand. about, talking into existence. Yeah. Now, now, how is it, like, because you the real deal in the NBA. How, how is all, is any pressure of everybody, you know, you're young and you're in the NBA, you're one of the top stars in the NBA, the brand deals is coming, we see you in Wild Wild, we see you with New Balance, and shout out, Looked out with the he, show. He blesses yeah, with the new balance. The you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm gonna put them on now. Listen, you ain't gonna. No, you no, gonna no, throw my sneaks on. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see if the game rub Put your walkers in my joints. No, you're not. He see, didn't even bring you niggas. Because he, he disrespected you don't play my. They be disrespecting my game. <laughs> like, well, they don't want to acknowledge my game. <laughs> he don't want that nasty game of yours to to to, 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 to lay in them New no, Balance sneaks like that. No, I'm just saying they like. You know what I mean? We shout out to New Balance too, man. For, shout out I mean, to New Balance. But but we seeing you, we seeing you handle your business too off yep. the court, man. Everywhere I look, I'm like, hey, me on that poster, you there, you there. I'm like, I go on wild wild, you up in there. I'm like, oh man, this boy kill him. How is it to really be like on your business, like and doing things outside of the game? You know, when I when I first got to the to the league and started having this stuff, I hated it. I hated it, man. I just love I love hoop so much. Like I don't want to, I mean, I don't, don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah. But now it's like you know, it's part of it. And I actually really enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Like when I, I was growing up, I don't tell a lot of people this. When I was growing up, like seventh, eighth grade, I was in theater. So I did like plays and stuff. So okay. like when I do all these skits and stuff, it'd be fun. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But for me, you got to keep the main thing, the main thing. As yes. long as you keep the main thing. Like I tell people, when I have shoots, when I do have to do stuff like that, it's after I work out. Mm-hmm. I, it'll never be like, oh, no, I can't work out. No, so it's like, I get up early in the summertime. I'm up, sit, I work out six, eight, ten. You know what I'm saying? I get all that work in. Then so like okay you want to shoot at two or four like I can shoot the rest of the day right. but I already did the hard part I, mean, I already did my the main thing I kept the main thing the main thing so now I'm good I can do all that stuff you know what I mean and when you keep the main thing the main thing that's when the stuff keep coming in yeah. I keep telling I tell everybody that you know like I'm blessed I appreciate what my agent do I appreciate what Rich do I appreciate what my family do for me and um, I'm just gonna keep doing that Rich Paul. Yep. Shout out to Rich Paul. Shout out to Rich man. Good dude. Great dude. Man. Great dude. He was here last night watching us play. Yeah. Good dude. Who the top three talkers at your position in the league? In my mm. position? When you, when you like, oh, I'm going in and like, this um. motherfucker ain't going to shut up, man. <laughs> Ooh. I'm a, I mean, start with one on my team, Pat Bev, in the but, point guard position. Mm-hmm. What's the craziest shit you ever heard Pat Bev say? I heard Pat Bev. <laughs> Pat, Pat. That you could tell. Pat off the hook. <laughs> I know my grandma going to watch this, so forgive my language, grandma. But that man told somebody recently in a game, I think somebody hit a shot on him. He said, you crazy? I slept shit out of you. I said, whoa, I said, hey, whoa, hold on, Pat. Pat. I, I grabbed him. I said, hold on, Pat, Pat. No, 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 no. I said, OG, OG, we cannot get a take right now. He said, no, nah, get off me. I said, I don't know who you think he talking to. I, I, said, Ooh. I said, okay, you know what? Go ahead. You crazy. Damn, Pat. So that's Pat. Pat is number one. Pat, he crazy for real. And then I'm going to say Russ. Russ intense. Yeah. He's intense. Mm. He's intense. <laughs> I can I'm, tell Russ listen, is bad. Listen, listen. My my rookie year, we played him in the playoffs, and he go up hard, like just hard on me, and I, I block it, and it go out of bounds on him, and he's sick. He cussing, he yelling. I, you know, I, like you said, I'm laughing at this point because I'm I'm rookie. I'm not like that man. Craig Williams calling to Aaron. Russ Russ been crazy as hell. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's screaming at me. I'm like, hey man, listen. I just play basketball. I'm just trying to help us win. Yeah. But no, nah, like, I got to talk to him now. He's a good dude though. Yeah. Great dude. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna say him. And then I'm gonna put a youngster in there who, who quiet when he talk. But he really talk. Anthony Edwards, he gonna tell you about it. He gonna tell you about himself. You know what I'm saying? He gonna t- if he if he if he cooking you, he gonna let you know about it. So Anthony Edwards be mm. like, it's you the foul shots. Yeah, I'm cooking this shit. Yeah, yeah you, literally. Man. Literally. Like, hey, <laughs> and we go, me and Ant go all the way back to high school. And he be like, Reach, I better get him off me. I'm I'm like cooking Oh, head. that's what I was I'm about like, to ask. That's what I was about to ask. Do anybody like you might be? You might have a friend that you. He like, man, I'm cooking this shit out this bull, man. Yeah, like, they do it. Y'all be it's, talking it's, like that. They do. Yeah, they do. They do. I'm saying, like I said, Anthony Harris is one of them. But he's so he's so calm and cool though. Like you wouldn't even know. Like he just he gonna you know like, get on his knees and laugh at us. I mean, he gonna tell you about himself though. He good though. He can. He can. Like I say, he did in the off. So now, out of, hey, now out of everybody, who's the number one talker in the league? Out of everybody. Just out of everybody, crazy. 
just they just throwed off. They just you know they're not gonna shut up all night. It's going you down talk tonight. Draymond. Hey. <laughs> 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 Draymond, my OG, so I, I, I had a feeling. He Draymond, he, 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 talk, he was talking. To, I'm like, Draymond, why are you talking to me? I don't even talk. I just be laughing. Why are you bitch? You, 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 you cussing me off for you, OG? He like this. Draymond, I'm like, shut up. Yeah. Man. I was going. I, I, I didn't even see that. Draymond. I'm playing against them that. No, two years ago, I think, in Golden State when, without Joel, and I'm cooking the whole first half. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, me smiling. Mm-hmm. My second year, I'm happy to be out here. Stop smiling. I'm like, whoa, what you. Me for all the <laughs> but I love, uh, I love the intensity though, man. I, I love it though, man. Tell like, somebody stop, to stop, stop smiling. Stop smiling all the time. I'm like, dang. Damn. I'm just happy to be hooping. <laughs> but nah, OG, you know, he's, that's what he does though, man. And then yeah, that's, the why chips. that's why they got four chips. That's why they got four chips because it's guys like him, for real. Absolutely. Now playing for the Philadelphia Eagles, right? I mean, play, I mean oh. playing for the Philadelphia 76ers. No, no, hold, 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 hold. hold on. He playing said, for the hold. Philadelphia 76ers, right? And he got the Eagles. The whole mind. city love you like this. I mean, just embrace you. He just won't. he's not coming the to post the child for Philadelphia. It's like, not happening. How are you rooting on the Cowboys? I'm just saying. I just want to just put that out there. Listen, like, okay, listen. For the city to love you this much. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, let me put it put it in my my perspective. Right, you you play in Dallas, right? You get drafted to the Mavericks, right? But you from here and you love the Eagles. Mm. Right? Mm-mm-mm. How you gonna go home to your people and tell them I'm a mad, I mean I'm a Cowboys fan now. How you gonna come home and do that? <coughs> Respectfully though. Seriously. Um if the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, you better not say it. Gave me two hundred and twenty million <laughs> for eight years. <laughs> now, listen, now, listen, Philly, listen. To, listen, though. You listen better now. not say what I'm. Go ahead, say what you want to say. Look, see now, I'm not came around the corner. See, look, see, here we go. Oh, he right here. Oh, oh, say what you want to say. Oh, let me just tell you. You'll so. be a Cowboys fan. No, let me listen. Would you be a Cowboys fan? <laughs> Can you listen? If the Dallas Mavericks drafted me, made my dreams come true, <laughs> that I always wanted. And I was number 21 when I knew I was supposed to be number one, two, three, four, or five. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, man. In that draft, you know, Dallas didn't get him. They did it, though. They passed I was him there. up. No, but we talking about you. I'm, but listen, so I'm putting myself in a situation. So you mean to tell me a Philadelphia homegrown kid that went to Kentucky... <laughs> we ain't talking about, I ain't go to Cobbin State. I ain't go to Howard. You, I went to can. Kentucky. Yep. <laughs> the mecca of professional athletes. <laughs> they send four of them a year in the first round. All the time. And you mean to tell me y'all skipped over me and let Dallas draft me? And then Dallas is about to give me $200 million <laughs> to stay there? What's your I'm team? a Dallas and the Eagles fan. <laughs> Are you talking about? Oh, oh, you gonna be a Cowboys fan? I'm gonna be an Eagles and a Cowboys fan. That's what I'm saying. You done? Because, you done? You banned from Philly? I'm because, glad let me Philly just heard you. Let me just say something. The you reality of this. I'm glad they heard you. Let me just say something. You uh, said it. Th- th- we talk about 220 million. You get these a million dollars, they won't be Eagles <laughs> fan no goddamn more. They be <laughs> Eagles lose. But look though, but look though, but look though, but look, OG, look. I don't hate the Eagles though. Like, like, um, would you would you be at the parade if they win? Yes. Mm. I'll be there. But look, let so, me say so this. So, part though. of him is the Eagles fan. But let me too. say this, though. Let me say this, though. I'm going to tell you two things. I'm going to be there. And, and, and you got to understand, he 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 about to get to do something next year. He didn't even feel that in his bank account yet. <laughs> Once he feel that in his he gonna account, he's going to be Eagles fan. He'll fly. He's going to fly <laughs> on the road to the <laughs> What we do? Hit him low. <laughs> hit him high. And watch my bank account fly. <laughs> <laughs> he, I think he's still operating off the rookie deal. So we let him slide with it. I don't still love the Cowboys. All right. Yeah. Wait till we though. get at 219 next year. He's crazy. 219 for five years. What? Fly Eagles fly. Fly Eagles. OG, when we watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> Man, listen, I don't have no problem. I grew up in the Cowboys era that, like you said, we ain't won yet. Right. So I ain't never seen us win. So, like, I ain't just, I ain't like the delusional Cowboy fan. I'm just, I'm from Dallas, Texas. I can't, I can't. Just jump them. But I do like I like the Eagles, man. I like Jalen Hurts. I like them guys. See, that's what I'm talking, because you kick it with these yeah, dudes. Yeah, I'm good dudes, man. They, they see you face to face. Yeah, like, them good people, man. So when they're not playing the Cowboys, 
I'm rooting for him every single time. That's good. That's till next year. That's all. Mm-hmm. They, they, this, they let him end this year out. <laughs> let him end this year out. Let me play the year out. What next year? We you know what we got to do. <laughs> we got to put all the barbecue sauce on that everything. <laughs> what? Because they made you wait. They could have socked it to your pocket this year. <laughs> but the reality of it is, God didn't want that to happen. And I called you and I told you. Yep. I said, and the best thing about it was. You understood it because we don't play for money. Nope. We play because we love this. Shit. You play because 100%. you love it because you, as a kid you loved it. As a as gr- growing into an adult you love it. So I had to call you and tell you when we didn't. Don't worry about it, man. That's gonna come, mm-hmm. and it's gonna come in an abundance because you don't play for that. All right. So, but have a little chip on your shoulder. Always. I did tell you that too because Always. you deserve to got paid this year. And none against the Philadelphia Eagles, or, I mean the Sixers organization, because y'all might have been trying to say a couple of dollars to bring such and such and such and such. But soccer to my f***ing boy, probably don't be playing no games with him, man. man. I'm going to tell him. You ain't got to tell him. You just sit there and smile. Do what you do. <laughs> do what you do. <laughs> do what you do. <laughs> soccer do his pocket like a rocket. You know yep. I mean? Soon as his off season come, because we can't afford that. I'm talking about, I'm going to Dallas, man. We're going to oh, play with, no, play with a little cheer, cunt, nobody. Cheer, cheer, we cheer, can't cheer, do that. Cheer, cheer, cheer. Nah. We got to have him right here for I'm the here. next 10, 12, 13, 14 years. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Real talk, chip. man. But I just want to thank you for coming in, we bro. We appreciate you, man. We oh, appreciate man. you, man. We really appreciate you. And as a Sixer fan, as a Tyrese Maxey fan, mm-hmm. you know, this is some of the best some of the best Sixer days we had in a long time. We feel like we got like in certain a certain sense a new Bubba Chuck, man. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, mean, I appreciate y'all. I, I tell my mom and fam all the time, like, I don't know what it is, but it's like I just feel like I connect to the people here so much more. Mm-hmm. It's like I worked so hard for everything I got, man. I know my mom, my dad, they work so hard. Like they not, they ain't, we ain't walking to no money. You know what I'm saying? My mom, you know, she should be okay with me saying this now, but she ain't, she ain't graduate college. She worked her behind off from Blue Cross Blue Shield all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top. Right. You know what I'm saying? My dad was a South Dallas kid. You know what I mean? He grew up in the hood. He ain't, you know what I'm saying? He worked for everything he got. You know, and they passed some trades right down to me. So like, and I feel like every Philly fan that comes to the game at, at Wells. They work for them tickets, bro. Yeah, they absolutely. work for them extremely hard. And like every single time I want to pull on the show for them and try to help them. Yeah, give me my sneaks though. Let me put my yeah, let me bring them on there. Bring, bring them on the show. Them on. New Balance did them especially for y'all. Shout out to New Balance for the game. Oh, they did? Yeah, oh, man, yo, and now you got. Yeah, you ain't got to look at that. Look at that. <laughs> they disrespect my. You got the money look on there. They got the money on there. Ooh. Shout out to New Balance. Yep. And they got Reese on there too. In the money. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, sign my puppy. They be sleeping, disrespecting my game. Oh, you ain't got no game. New Balance. We got the clips. They don't want to put that on We got clips of me scoring out here. Like, let's be. Okay, let's be for real. I talked to people over New Balance. They said they love you. They said that you're a great guy, but they said they get these sneaks to ballers, hoopers, hoopers, man. You're Killers. not one of them, man. I gotta uh, put some clips. Of them, so. I gotta put some of my classic clips of me scoring, young boy. Who's you scoring on that? <laughs> what? Oh, you right. I'm just curious. <laughs> Who's you scoring on? He was scoring on some kids, man. Look at that, man. He that signed is, that joint. I'm wearing for the first time Friday. Got the Friday. money on it. Got the yeah. money on there. So yeah. let me just tell you something. My feet was in them before his feet was. Fact. Just That's enough. A fact. Just understand. <laughs> yeah, man. I was ripped for game. <laughs> no, you got to get the sneaks when he wear them Friday. Yeah. You got to get them sneaks when he wear them. Put oh, 40. yeah. I need he them. Gonna, he going to score his most in them. Yes, I he need He going to break a record with them on. He might get 40. <laughs> he might get 40. No, what's your record? 50. 40 what? 42? 43? Mine? I had 50 once. Woo. 50? Yeah, against the Pacers. You did have 50 I against the Pacers. You did. You did go for a 50, 50 ball against the Pacers. Joel said we wouldn't leave that court till I got 50. You Damn. did go for a 50. Let me ask you a question, though, before you get out of here. Do you deserve to start an All-Star game this year? I think you do. I'm you just know, personally, I think you. I, honestly, and I, everybody know Damian Lillard's my guy. Yep. For I sure. go by Damian Giller. Yep. But I just think this year, name. I think Tyrese is two Tyrese's out here that Killer. is playing unbelievable. Shout out to him too. Another another dude from my draft class. Tyrese and Melo. We got some hoopers over there. Yes. I think Tyrese Maxi and Tyrese Halliburton is playing unbelievable. 
that I that even uh, like last week sometimes I looked at y'all stats in mm-hmm. comparison mm-hmm. like like okay he shoot better from right. three than him right, right, right. okay he averaged more assists than him right, right, right. but the reality of it is somebody is averaging like six and a half to one turnover a game I'm just saying I'm not putting that out there I'm just saying man. somebody averaged one point two turnovers a game you know what I'm saying man you know how it seven goes. assists you know how it goes. we gonna see the chip fall. <laughs> <sighs> the chips gonna fall how they fall. <laughs> Somebody go hold on. Now I want y'all to put this into perspective. As a great NBA point guard, three to one is considered good. Four to one is considered excellent. What is six to one considered? Man, taking care of it. Taking care of it, man. Oh hold on, wait. Come here, come here real quick. You I want you to say that on camera. Come here, bitch. Do not come here. This man come, about to be on the camera. Oh, come in, big fella. Just right here. Just say that one more time on camera. What what does that? All star starter. Oh, okay. Thank right you. Here. All star starter. <laughs> okay, that's all I needed you for, brother. You Appreciate say that. you, man. That's, that's, your, that's your brother's keep. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> that, that's twenty six points. That's seven assists. That's one turnover a game. That's excellence. Love. That's New Balance. That's million dollars worth of game. Yeah. That's million dollars worth of game. <laughs> That's Tyrese Maxey. And it's just like that. Right! 